This class is called Array Class in the namespace Array Proj. What we're going to be doing in this class is just basically running the main method, looking at the process of creating and using Array Elements. To begin with, you'll notice that we've created an instance of an array, an integer array, which I'm calling x. Notice that that array has a total of five elements. If I wanted to load values within that array, basically what I need to do is to go to each of the elements in the array and then access those by using their appropriate index number. To do that, I've chosen to use a for loop. Now I've set the initial value of that counter variable i equal to zero, and I'm looping while i is less than five, doing a single increment on i, i plus plus. That means the first iteration through i element, excuse me, x element i is actually x element zero. Next time through, it's element one, two, three, and finally four. And those are the five elements of the array. In each case, basically I'm just calculating a math.pow, so I'm taking that base i and then raising that to the power of two. Now because math.pow returns a double data type, I am downcasting that to an int so that I can store that in to the array element x, because x is an array of integers, not an array of doubles. Then we'll go ahead and take a look at each element of the array. Now I used a slightly different looping structure here. I used something called the for each, and I loaded it and read it in two different ways here, using two different looping structures, so you can see the difference between them. The for each structure is very useful when working with array structures because you can use some sort of proxy variable to uh, basically be the element that we use to loop through each element of the array or collection. In this particular case, I'm saying for each int i in x. So int i is our little counter variable here. And basically I'm saying for each element in the array x, I'm going to allow i to stand in place of each element one at a time through each iteration. Now you'll notice that I'm not doing an i++ here or any type of particular incrementation. That happens automatically. That's what the for each does as it goes through each element of that array or collection and then allows i to stand in place of each element appropriately. So I'm just going to do a console.write line and write out the value of i. Now this console.write line just outputs a blank line. So on to the next statement. Now here what we're doing is we're creating another array. This is also an integer array named y. Although this time, I'm going to be storing the values into the array as the array is defined. Notice that I've used the syntax which uses that array constructor, new int 5, so I still have an array of five elements, but inside the curly braces after the five in the, in the square brackets, I'm indicating the values that I want to store inside that array, 6, 3, 8, 4, and 1. Now I'm interested in sorting these elements. So basically I'm just going to write out a little line to the console that says before sort, and then I'm going to start the process of outputting some data. So what we're going to do is just loop through each element of the array and write out the value of that element separated by commas. This logic here, if you look at that, is just basically identifying whether or not I'm actually working with the upper bound element um, and then putting a comma after that element if the data is not necessarily representing the upper bound element. After the sort, I'm going to do the same thing. But you'll notice what I've done here is I've called the sort method of the array class. The sort method is static. So I use the name of the base class, which is array, array.sort, and then pass it the array that I wish it to sort. In this case, I wish it to sort the array y. So after I do the sort and then I do the printout, this data should be in sorted order. Let's go ahead and execute this and find out what the results look like. Well, if we take a look at the results, first of all, we see the output of our first array, which is pretty much what we would expect. Remember that the first element is zero, second element is one, third is two, etc., and we're basically just returning the square of each of those elements. Next, we have our array both before and after the sort. You'll notice here the results of that sort method. By applying the array.sort, we've turned this array with these elements into this structure or this order of arrayed elements. 
Now this just gives you an example of one method sort, but as you can see, these methods would be useful in a number of different situations where we want to get information about the array or you want to manipulate the array. So I've seen methods here such as sort and get upper bound uh, that we can use to get more information about that array or to manipulate it.